These days, everyone speaks of leadership development. Leadership has become a catch-all term. It can mean different things to different people. However, I can state quite emphatically that a leader must be able to A. Make good decisions and B. Communicate and convince the team to execute it, that is to negotiate. Because every action is a decision and every interaction is a negotiation. What we present here is applicable in your personal life as well. My steadfast belief that we have serious problems when making decisions is supported by two independent surveys. First, in a recent McKinsey survey of over 2,000 executives, only 28% said that the quality of decisions were really good. 60% thought that bad decisions were as frequent as good ones. And amazingly, the remaining 12% said good decisions were very rare. Second, a recent study by the Business Objects magazine showed that 93% of U.S. managers had not had any formal training in this. No doubt you'll say that your success is proof that you make good decisions. It's the other guy who needs training. It's natural to think that judgment, experience, intuition, logic, common sense, etc. is the way to go. Because in the good old days, this is how great leaders went about their business. Of course, you don't hear of the sob stories and the fiascos. For example, TWA and Pan Am, the pioneers of air travel are no more. Bad decisions at Kodak led to their bankruptcy. Billionaire Ross Perot admitted that two of his worst decisions were turning down early partnership opportunities in Microsoft and in Home Depot, each worth billions of dollars today. In 2008, Yahoo rejected a $44.6 billion bid from Microsoft. And then in 2017, when Yahoo was put up for sale, Verizon grabbed it for just $4.5 billion. When startup Netflix approached Blockbuster CEO to partner with them, he laughed at the proposition. A few years later, Netflix forced the bankruptcy of Blockbuster. Coca-Cola, for example, invested millions of dollars in developing and launching new Coke. Yet they were forced to withdraw it in just three months after launch. These are just a few. There are hundreds more. Of course, hindsight is 2020. It is easy to criticize those decisions in retrospect. I agree no one can be expected to make the right decision all the time. However, if these unfortunate executives had approached these decisions with a little more curiosity, with an open mind, recognizing their own fallibility and limitations and the perils of the VUCA world, they might have seen the other side of the deal. Today's decision-making is further complicated by big data. Managers receive real-time data on manpower, sales, budget, cash flow, financing, inventory, supplies, transport, share prices, competitor mergers, currency fluctuations, geopolitical and regulatory issues, and much more. This is big data. Managers are forced to integrate massive amounts of data into the decision-making process. Today, you can have all the information you need and yet make suboptimal decisions. Why? Due to lack of training. And if you think you're in total control of your decisions, think again. Unbeknown to you, your decisions are being contaminated, if not manipulated. Subordinates impose constraints on what options are available to you. Some modify the environment to shape your decisions. Others actually manipulate your thought process with well-designed techniques. Some of the more well-known decision-making biases are the loss aversion bias, the interest bias, the tribal or social bias, overconfidence bias, the pattern recognition bias, the introduction bias, the confirmation bias, and the recency bias. You must pay close attention to these. How do we ensure we make good decisions? Well, everyone speaks of problem solving and decision making. I want to stress that problem solving is not decision making. Problem solving is identifying acceptable solutions and decision making is selecting one to act upon. So let's keep them separate. Two of the most common types of decisions we face are multi-criteria decisions, and single criterion decisions with uncertainties. When framing a problem, the assumptions you make reflect your understanding of the problem and what you consider to be relevant. These are the criteria that drive your decisions. But how relevant these criteria are is highly subjective. A common belief is that the more criteria you include, the better your decision will be. Not true. In fact, using a large number of criteria is counterproductive. 
because it dilutes the impact of more significant criteria. Every decision or prediction you make is based on the likelihood of an event happening or when that event would occur. And the fact is, your data is X percent correct and 100 minus X percent wrong, always. Furthermore, when dealing with probabilities, one should consider the event probability and the impact probability. Beware, teams do not guarantee better or safe decisions. While groups and teams can provide specialized knowledge and know-how, history has shown that groups are often ineffective at making optimum decisions. Some may recall the disasters of NASA space shuttles, Challenger and Columbia. How could an eminent organization as NASA have failed so catastrophically? A panel concluded that in the more recent Columbia disaster, various committees had granted over 1,600 safety waivers. They were victims of groupthink. Since most decisions in the corporate world have to be approved by a high authority, your decisions must be defensible. It is difficult to defend a decision that has not been validated. The validation process explores the sensitivity of your decision to the assumptions and the data and the biases. Furthermore, you should not judge the quality of your decision by the outcome because the outcome depends on the implementation as well. In spite of all my preaching, backed by 20 years of experience in this field, there are many who will insist there is no substitute for logic and intuition or gut decisions. Don't let your feelings hijack your behavior. Neurologically speaking, feelings and senses first enter through the spinal cord and go through the limbic system where emotions are developed. It's only thereafter it reaches the frontal lobe where rational thinking takes place. Thus, you can see, we experience feelings before we can formulate a rational response. This is where intuition and logic collide. Yes, framing a problem correctly and modeling it is not an easy task. You have to decide when the outcome is serious enough to warrant modeling. I repeat, in today's world of big data and VUCA, you must reinforce your logic and intuition with analytical techniques. Remember, leadership is top down. However, most decisions are bottom up because managers have to depend on subordinates and stakeholders to provide data, information, options, context, etc. So, decision making training is required across the board. So, what are the takeaways from this video? Every action is a decision and every interaction is a negotiation. Management in famous companies have made catastrophic decisions with major losses. In the age of big data and VUCA, logic and intuition alone are not sufficient. We are all victims of the illusion of knowledge. Our decisions are being contaminated and manipulated. There are many biases that prevent us from making optimal decisions. Decision making is not problem solving. When dealing with criteria, more is not better. Your data is X percent correct and 100 minus X percent wrong. Always. When dealing with uncertainties, consider event probability and impact probability. Teams do not guarantee better decisions. Our decisions must be defensible and must be validated. Do not judge the quality of your decision by the outcome. Too often our emotions hijack our decisions and logic and intuition will collide. Leadership is top down, but most decision making are bottom up. If we don't update our knowledge, we too will become obsolete. We train with an emphasis on the three M's, the message, the messenger, and the method. We have in-house workshops and public workshops on decision-making and negotiating. Do let us know if we can help you. Remember, every action is a decision and every interaction is a negotiation.